Every data scientist knows about NumPy or numerical Python. It's a Python library which is very fast when you compare it to base Python. But what if I tell you that you can accelerate the execution of NumPy using TensorFlow and you can achieve speed ups up to 100 or 200 times. So in this video, I'll walk you through the amazing NumPy API on TensorFlow. What exactly is NumPy API on TensorFlow? Well, TensorFlow implements a subset of NumPy API available as tf.experimental.numpy. This allows running NumPy code accelerated by TensorFlow while also allowing access to all the amazing TensorFlow's APIs. In order to achieve great speedups, I would highly recommend that you run this code in a GPU-enabled system. Now that the introduction is out of the way, let's kickstart the video. But before we do that, a sub to my channel would be really motivating. Just for everyone's information, I am creating this video in the first week of March of 2021. There are changes that are bound to come in, so feel free to read the documentation if there are changes to the code and the implementation. In order to give you a demonstration of the speed up that you can achieve when using the NumPy API from TensorFlow, the first thing that you'll require is a good solid GPU enabled system. In order to use a GPU, I'm currently using a Google Colab session. If you're trying to replicate this in your local machine, then you will have to install TF nightly. Since I'm using Google Colab, I don't require it, but still just for the sake of executing it, I'll execute it. The next command that I'll execute is nvidia-smi. This command gives me an entire picture of the GPU that I'm using. So I don't have a GPU locally running. I have a GPU that is something that is borrowed from the Google servers. So that is what the details are. So I've been allocated Tesla T4, which is an amazing GPU. The most important thing that I want to lay stress here is if you want to replicate whatever I do in this video, your CUDA version should be greater than 11. Let me now go forward and import necessary modules such as time, numpy, tensorflow and tensorflow numpy. So let me go forward and run this. The other thing that I want to point out is that the current TensorFlow version is 2.4.1. So you have some requirements that you have to satisfy in order to use the TensorFlow NumPy API. The highlighted piece of code is allowing TensorFlow to extract all the GPUs that are there. If there is a GPU that exists, then I'll save the location of that GPU into the variable device. If there is no GPU, then I'll fall back to the CPU that I have. So let me go forward and run the cell. Since in my current Google Colab session, I have a GPU. So that is what is allocated to the variable device. The next thing that I do is I create a variable called as R underscore size and I save a value equal to 10,000 in it. Well, you might be wondering, why are we exactly doing this? Well, there is a reason for it. And I want to disclose the reason as soon as we enter the next section of the code. Now, how do I go forward and check the speed up that is there? Well, here is where my experiment comes into picture. Now the experiment that I want to perform is I want to multiply two big NumPy arrays and correspondingly two big TensorFlow arrays as well and calculate the time it takes for the entire execution to happen. So if you're still confused in terms of what I want to achieve, let me kickstart the activity and you will have more clarity as we go forward. In the highlighted section of the code, what I've essentially done is I've created two NumPy arrays of the size 1000 cross 1000 and I've saved it into two corresponding variables np underscore r1 and np underscore r2. 
So let me go forward and run this cell. In the next piece of code, what I do basically is I kickstart a timer. Once the timer is up and running, I carry out the matrix multiplication operation and I save it into a variable called as np underscore r3. Once the execution is done and once the results are stored into the variable that I've just created, I stop the timer and I print out the overall time that is taken in the process. So let me go forward and execute the cell. This entire process is a very CPU intensive task. So it will take a while. So the overall time taken for the entire matrix multiplication operation is around 90 seconds. Given the size of the array that we had, I think it's still doing a really reasonable job. Now let me go forward and carry out the same operation using TensorFlow's NumPy implementation. So in the highlighted piece of code, I follow the entire process again, but this time I'll be making use of TensorFlow's NumPy API. So I kickstart the timer. The next thing that I do is with tf.device, I pass in my GPU, which is kind of saved into the device variable. The next thing that I do is I create two TensorFlow NumPy arrays, that is tf underscore r1 and tf underscore r2 with the same size that is 1000 cross 1000. And in the next line of code, I basically multiply the two arrays that is tf underscore r1 and tf underscore r2 and I save the result into a variable called as tf underscore out. Once the entire execution ends, I kind of stop the timer and I print out the overall time taken by TensorFlow's NumPy API. So let me go forward and execute this cell. The overall time taken for this entire operation is less than a second. So the overall speed up that we are getting is around 150. Now imagine having a greater data set and if you have to keep using NumPy functions, then I would highly recommend that you start using TensorFlow's NumPy API over the normal NumPy that we are so used to using. Now you might be wondering, are all the NumPy functions supported by TensorFlow's NumPy API? Well, at this point of time, no. But I'm pretty sure with time, most of the functions that we have in NumPy would essentially be implemented in TensorFlow going forward. Yet again, a big, big, big shout out to the TensorFlow team for creating a NumPy API on TensorFlow. So this is all that I had in today's video. I would request all of you to try out the NumPy API on TensorFlow and let me know your views in the comment section of the video. Thank you so much for watching my video. It would be really motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for the new videos that I have in mind for data science and machine learning. Thanks again for watching the video.